Ladies and gentlemen, we will begin tonight's presentation in two minutes. Please take your seats. Huge W for DK. The Phenom has done it again. Ataya Titikun wins for the second time in a rookie season. the U.S. Women's Open at Pine Needles. For the win. There it is, and Brooke Henderson is a major champion again. This moment would ever come. Lydia Ko is looking better than ever for 2022. It is a two win season. Biggest day in her career, the ARG Women's Open Champion. And Angie Cho perseveres and wins the championship. the most. 
emotions here anytime you say goodbye to a place that has been this meaningful. And the final leap into Poppy's Pond will belong to Jennifer Kupcho. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Tom Abbott, your MC for the evening. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 2022 Rolex LPGA Awards, and welcome LPGA fans who are watching us around the globe on Facebook and for the first time this year on YouTube. Tonight, we celebrate the 73rd season of the greatest women's sports league in the world. You can applaud there if you'd like, yeah. This was my uh, 13th season uh, working on the LPGA Tour coverage for Golf Channel. And at the beginning of each season, I always wonder, what will the year have in store? And by the time I get to the end of the year, things have happened that I would never have thought were going to happen to me during the season. We knew this year that Judy Rankin was going to step away from the broadcast booth, but I didn't realize how emotional it was going to be to say goodbye to Judy. Also, I never imagined that last week I would be standing on a beach in Clearwater, Florida, alongside a longtime tournament executive as he wore his uh, sleeveless rain jacket and golf shirt, and we'd be watching Flo Rida on a stage on the beach, partying and having a great time. I, I thought that Gemma Dreiber may win on the LPGA Tour at some stage, but I could never have predicted that when she did win, one of her prizes would be a toilet, which happened this year, part of her winning package at the Toto Japan Classic. She won a toilet before she had bought her first house. Uh, but on a, a serious note, 2022 was a year that signaled real change. Major purses moved to record highs. And on Sunday, the biggest winner's check in women's golf history will be handed out here at the CME Group Tour Championship. At the AIG, yeah, you can clap for that as well. At the AIG Women's Open this summer, three young girl golfers came to visit our broadcast booth. They wanted to meet Morgan Pressel. They were at Muirfield to watch the best women golfers in the world. Now, a few years prior to that, they could not have even dreamed of one day being a member, let alone winning the championship on that hallowed ground. But today, they can dream of being a member, and now they can dream of one day following in the footsteps of Ashley Buhai as she lifted the trophy in that fading Scottish summer sun. It's real change, it's making a difference in the game, and it's happening before our eyes. Dreams came true for many players this year, for Buhai, for Jody Ewart Shadoff in her 246th start, for Jennifer Kupcho as she made the final leap into Poppy's Pond celebrating her first victory. For our Taya Titikun as the 19-year-old Ty emerged atop the Rolex rankings and made a run at nearly every major award on the LPGA Tour. The Louise Suggs Rolex Rookie of the Year, the Rolex Player of the Year, and the Vare Trophy. In total, 11, 11 players from nine different countries captured their first LPGA victories, and they will be celebrated tonight as Rolex first-time winners. The majors delivered many memorable performances. I've mentioned Kupcho and Buhai, but what about Brooke Henderson and Inji Chun, each picking up their first major championship trophies since 2016? And Minji Lee delivering at Pine Needles to capture her second major title in as many years. We saw innumerable comebacks from injury, from heartbreak on the golf course, and we witnessed long overdue breakthroughs and well-earned success from golf's greatest ambassadors. 2022 has represented the absolute best of women's golf with no shortage of remarkable moments and extraordinary triumphs. 
Now, tonight would not be possible without the tremendous support of an incredible partner in Rolex. For over four decades, Rolex and the LPGA have shared a very strong relationship. These are two organizations that cherish great accomplishment and symbolize perpetual excellence. As the 73rd year of the LPGA comes to a close, we thank Rolex for their continuing support of women's golf and the LPGA. And I would like to welcome members of the Rolex team who are here tonight from both New York and Geneva, including Arno Laborde, who's made his way from the DP World Tour in Dubai to be with us here tonight. He's the global head of golf for Rolex, and he will be joining me on the stage a little later for some important presentations. I want to welcome the LPGA Commissioner, Molly Marcus Saman, her second Rolex LPGA Awards. Welcome, Molly. And we have many LPGA players, both past and present, with us in the room. So thank you for taking your time on a school night to be here and to celebrate with us this evening. A round of applause for our LPGA players. Tomorrow, the LPGA is set to unveil its 2023 season. We know already the tour will welcome new sponsors next year, like Mizuho, Jehem Eagle, and Hanwha. 2023 will also fe feature not just one, but two opportunities for players to represent their countries as both the Hanwha Life Plus International Crown and the Solheim Cup will be played. I'd like to salute the invaluable people who make the LPGA Tour schedule such a great success. Here tonight are many of the LPGA's tournament owners and title sponsors, including our new partners. I would also like to thank the LPGA's global television partners, and I'd like to recognize the team from NBC and Golf Channel. Molly Solomon, our executive producer, is here this evening. Earlier this year, I met a gentleman in California who was volunteering at the Satokoi Club during the, the Medihil Championship. He told me that along with his wife, he travels to numerous LPGA events throughout the year on his own dime, giving up his time. So please take a moment to salute all of the volunteers who give up their time so graciously all around the world to support the LPGA Tour. Many of them are watching tonight's live broadcast. So please give them a big hand. This week, the biggest prize in women's golf lies in wait, as I mentioned, for the winner of the season-ending CME Group Tour Championship. A winner's check for a record $2 million and a total tournament purse of $7 million. They kicked off the week with a great concert for St. Jude, and we will finish it with a winner's check for $2 million. CME and Terry Duffy have stepped up once again to provide a fitting end to the season. So a big round of applause for Terry Duffy and the entire team at CME for their dedication to women's golf. Now our first presentation this evening is the Founders Award, which is given to a member who, in the opinion of her peers, best exemplifies the spirit, ideals, and values of the LPGA through her behavior and deeds. But before we present the Founders Award, I would like to take a moment to remember LPGA founder Shirley Spork, who passed away on April 12th of this year, just shy of her 95th birthday. Shirley was a key figure in the history of the LPGA, a Hall of Fame member, a friend to many in this room and beyond. Her passion for teaching the game she loved so much led to the creation of the LPGA Professionals Division, her massive contributions to the game, both on and off the golf course, will never be forgotten. So let's take a moment to remember Shirley. Shirley would love a round of applause, wouldn't she? <laughs> we 
We turn our attention to honoring a player who embodies those wonderful characteristics of the LPGA's 13 founders. And joining me on stage to present this magnificent trophy is the 2021 winner of the Founders Award, Lydia Ko. And as Lydia makes her way to the stage, let's turn our attentions to the big screen as Lydia introduces us to the winner for 2022. An award named after 13 remarkably driven and passionate women, the spirit of the founders is what has paved the way for all of us. It was the vision and dedication of these women that has allowed us all to compete at the highest level of professional golf. Their bold passion paved the way for so many to dream to follow in their footsteps. Together as a tour, we work to continue to grow the game we love with both courage and grace. The Founders Award is an award voted on by our peers. The Founders Award is a special honor. As I mentioned in my acceptance speech last year, while we are all competitors, one of our greatest attributes as a tour is that we genuinely support one another. We're here to grow as both professionals and people as we strive for excellence. It is the responsibility of us to act like a founder in all that we do. I'm truly honored to present this year's Founders Award to Inji Chan. Her abilities on the golf course are only second to her character off the golf course. A truly inspiring competitor and friend to so many. When you see Inji, you would not be able to guess what she shot that day as she always walks around with her warm, genuine smile. Her character is a true testament to what a champion she is on and off the golf course. Congratulations to NG, the winner of the 2022 Founders Award. Drive on. And let's welcome to the stage NG Chan. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> I'm so honored and thankful to be on this stage tonight to receive any award as a player on the LPGA is special. But this one is even more special because it is from the LPGA players who I have great respect and admiration for. When I was young, I wanted to play on the LPGA and to be on TV. After my dreams came true, I had a great experience on the tour while making good friends and meeting fans from the all over the world. As much as I'm thankful, I think I also hold a sense of responsibility as a professional golfer. At some point, I thought to myself that my words and actions have an influence on those around me. So I wanted to show good energy and positive thoughts with as many people as I could. I want to continue to share good energy with more people in this moment and in the future. Lastly, I want thanks to my family and friends, team, sponsors, and fans for their love and support. Thanks again, and I hope everyone enjoyed the rest of your evening. Thank you. Inji Chan, ladies and gentlemen. Now, uh, this year we have a very close race for the Rolex Player of the Year. There are four players vying for the Rolex Player of the Year, including Lydia Ko. And throughout the evening, we're going to be hearing from those uh, four players who are vying for that very prestigious title. So we're going to start with Lydia. But before we chat, Lydia, we're going to... Uh, you didn't know about this? You didn't know you were in the race for the Rolex Player of the Year? My agents are here. And Don't they always blame the agents. Always blame the agents. <laughs> Um, before we have a little chat, we're going to take a look back at your amazing season. Lydia 
Jericho is looking better than ever. Oh my goodness. Come on. Okay, that's ridiculously good. I mean, played to perfection, you might say. What a remarkable performance. How do you make the game look so easy? <sighs> So good. How about that? I don't know if I can describe this. I'm glad I didn't have to play it. It's a no one for one of the greats of our generation, a 17th LPGA Tour title. Ladies and gentlemen, the BMW Ladies Champion for 2022. Let's hear it for Lydia Ko. I don't think I have any complaints for 2022. Been a good, it's been a good year, isn't it? Um, let's talk about 2016, your uh, 2022, your first multi-win season since 2016. How important has this year been for you? Yeah, um, I think actually going back to 21, my win in Hawaii uh, set up for a year like this year, and uh, you now I got my first win in my second event um, of the season, and um, going into our first one at Hilton Grand Vacations. I was, uh, it's safe to say I wasn't ready. Um, I definitely had the ducks going on. Everybody knows the, what those ducks are. The they're duck no, hooks? They're not good. Okay, yeah. we don't think about you as yeah, hitting yeah, duck hooks, yeah. don't worry. Uh, no ducks right now, which is great. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, I was nervous to kind of get my season started. I really wasn't sure how it was gonna go. And um, when you kind of start like that, you you don't really have a lot of expectations and because of that I think I was able to play a little bit more freely and you know winning in Gamebridge and then you know playing really consistently pretty much from the US Women's Open onwards built that confidence and I think I was able to get in a good rhythm of things and winning in Korea was probably one of my most special and biggest wins in, in my 18 wins um, and having born in Korea and, and being born there is something that I'm very proud of, and uh, you know, I still speak Korean at home. I just ate Korean food before coming what? here. <laughs> you can, know, the food at the Ritz is pretty good. I can eat for like three people's okay. worth of okay. food, so don't yeah, worry. Okay, don't worry. Okay. Um, uh, so you know, it's uh, I'm very proud of my background, and to have won there in front of family, and you know, with everything going on with COVID, uh, just seeing fans and family there it was special. So. Yeah, like I said in my interview, I think 2022, I've got no complaints. Um, obviously, a there's a lot of things uh, in line this week, um, you know, with how much Terry Duffy has done to elevate this event, uh, you know, putting a $2 million check for the winner. I think it's absolutely incredible, and he has kind of set the standard for um, our tour, and I think pushed other partners uh, to kind of um, go on this great level for women's golf. So. Yeah, it's, uh, there's a lot of things um, going on, but there's been s so many players that has played such incredible golf, like Minji and Ataya and Brooke and so many others. So I'm just going to enjoy it and have fun. And um, tonight is a very special night celebrating not only the players, but you know our staff and all the partners and everybody involved with the LPGA. So you know we're hoping to finish off the season on a beautiful night like today. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to be here this evening. Uh, 65 today, seven under par. You're leading the way. You have a slim lead in the Rolex Player of the Year race, but we'll see how it plays out. But the best of luck over the, the next three days. Lydia Ko, ladies and gentlemen. Thank, thank you, you, Lydia. Well, our next award is all about overcoming difficult obstacles and pushing through challenges. This year's award, has in, this year's award winner has embodied the definition of perseverance throughout her life and her golf career. To introduce this year's winner of the Heather Farr Perseverance Award, we can listen to Natalie Golbus. It's an honor to introduce the recipient of this year's Heather Farr Award, an award voted on by you guys. This incredible woman was diagnosed with thyroid cancer when she was in college. She battled through chemotherapy and treatments and still decided to pursue her dream as an LPGA professional golfer. 
As if golf wasn't hard enough, I can't imagine what it would be like to play a tournament and to go through what she goes through every single week without a thyroid. In my 20 years of playing on the LPGA, I have yet to meet a player more inspiring, positive, and upbeat daily than her. She is a reminder to all of us to keep the game in perspective and to never give up. I am so honored to introduce my friend and partner in birdies and bows, Elizabeth Nagel. And please welcome to the stage Liz Nagel and presenting the award to Liz will be LPGA player president Vicki Gatzackerman. Thank you all so much, especially Natalie. I'll have to thank her for that one later. Okay, I'm not very good at this, um, so bear with me and I'll try to keep it together and not get too emotional. Um, there probably isn't a single person in this room whose life hasn't been touched by cancer. Some in big ways and some a little less big, but none small and none easy. So I'll spare you the cancer sucks speech because I think we all know that already. The truth is, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to say in this speech. I was a little overwhelmed that I even won this award until I started reading a little bit more about Heather Farr. The very first article I pulled up gave me chills. I knew we were both golfers with big smiles and fighting spirits, but I had no idea how similar our stories and journeys with cancer actually were. She was 23 and I was 20 when we both heard the C word for the first time. We were both eventually told, you're too young to have cancer, and asked, how could this happen to someone so young? We were both at crucial times in our golf careers, hers a little further along than mine at the time, but both of our diagnoses shook both our families and our golfing families. The love and support of those families were what helped both of us keep moving forward. For me, it was my family and my team and coaches at Michigan State. For Heather, it was her family and her LPGA family. My favorite quote I read about Heather was from Nancy Lopez. She said, Heather was a little bundle of special. And Heather's sister, Missy, said, Heather just had a light to her. One in two men and one in three women will get cancer at some point in their life. So I'm not standing up here as a unique situation. I represent all of us. I represent all cancer fighters and survivors. I represent people living without a major organ in their body. I represent anyone who has to rely on taking a pill every day for their body to feel normal. I represent those of us who have dealt with quirks after having surgery because my neck will forever tilt just a little bit this way now. I represent the daily struggles we all face. Mine are things like adjusting to changes in temperature and feeling tired and a little bit foggy. But really, I represent all of the members of this tour because we are all persevering something. And our struggles do not define us but they do prove how strong we are. I'm honored to now also represent Heather because I'm lucky enough to still be here and tell our stories and to follow my dreams on and off the golf course, something that was taken from her that we should never take for granted. My story may be cancer when you look at the cover, but just like every woman on this tour, if you read a little further, the things we overcome and are enduring every day to play on the LPGA are truly incredible. Our stories are all of strength and perseverance and spirit. I've never been more proud to say I play on the LPGA. Truly, we all deserve this award. You all inspire me to persevere as a cancer survivor, as a golfer, and as a woman. Thank you for choosing me to be the one to accept this award. I accept it for all of us. Thank you. Our next award salutes the more than 1,900 LPGA professionals and recognizes an individual who has made a major contribution to the teaching of golf while also showing love 
and dedication to students and the game itself. To present this year's Ellen Griffin Rolex Award, we have the privilege of hearing from Marvel Barnard, National President of the LPGA Professionals. The Ellen Griffin Rolex Award, honoring the late teaching professional Ellen Griffin, recognizes an individual, male or female, who's made a major contribution to the teaching of golf and who emulates Ellen's spirit, love, and dedication to students, teachers, and the game of golf. Carol Preisinger joins an elite group of her peers as the recipient of the 2022 Ellen Griffin Rolex Award. Carol has held many positions of leadership and service within the LPGA professionals throughout her career. Among her many roles, she served as the Southeast Section President, and she also served on the LPGA Professionals Executive Committee from 2011 to 2016. A master professional, Carol is a highly awarded golf educator and coach. She was twice named LPGA Professionals National Teacher of the Year, and she's been a golf magazine top 100 teacher in America since 2004. And just weeks ago, Carol was notified that she's been elected to the LPGA Professionals Hall of Fame. Please join me in welcoming to the stage the very deserving recipient of the 2022 Ellen Griffin Rolex Award, Carol Preisinger. Please welcome Carol to the stage. And Carol will also be receiving a Rolex timepiece, a watch, and Arno Laborde from Rolex will join Marvel on stage for the presentation. Thank you so much to my LPGA family and friends. And thank you, Rolex, for your commitment and support in women's golf. Ellen Griffin, as you know, was a mentor. She was a pioneer, but she was also an author. Every morning, Ellen Griffin would wake up at the crack of dawn, and she would put pen to paper. She would write down her philosophies on life, and we call them Griffinisms. And I wanted to share a few of her Griffinisms with you tonight that relate to time. Taking time, making time, and giving time. Ellen wrote, the time to do things is always just ahead, or just past, or now. Always there is a time. When, pray tell, is yours. Well, my time with Ellen Griffin was short but sweet. It was on the practice range at the University of Georgia golf course when Vicki Getz was only 13 years old. And Ellen came with her friend, Dot Germain, to see Coach Liz Murphy and check out the team. So she's walking down the driving range, and our stellar team at that time, Ellen just watched them hit flush shots and came down to the end and saw me hitting fat fades. And she knew right in an instant what to do. She started pointing a golf club at me. And she said, separate your arms. And she put the club under my left elbow, under, on top of my right. She closed me up. She changed my path. She shallowed me out. She didn't need a track man to do that. So she made time for me. She didn't know who I was, but she made time for me. And to make time is to craft, to build, to create, to become. And who knew I would be standing here tonight becoming half the teacher that Ellen Griffin was and to be here in her honor. But in today's life, we're so busy making time, crafting our, honing our game, that we have to take time for ourselves. And it's a hard thing to do. Ellen said, life puts demands on us every day. And it's too sad that we fail to recognize that sometimes the demand is merely just to rest a bit. Now, I said yes to every opportunity that the LPGA gave me. When Dr. Betsy Clark or Nancy Henderson called me and asked me to do something, I said yes. And I go, what did I just say yes to? 
But I knew there would be people to help me, help me along the way. And Lynn Marriott walked up to me one day, and it gets very overwhelming, service and every education. And Lynn said, you know, Carol, sometimes it's okay to zip up your bubble and say no. And that's okay. And I tell my friend Tina Toombs that every week. You have to take time for yourself. So we're busy making time and taking time, but we have to give our time. We have to give our time to ourselves, but also to great causes. OK, where's my other sheet? So I, t I attended my first LPGA conference way back when, and I heard the keynote speaker ask us to write down five things that you wanted to accomplish in life. Then she said, narrow it down to three, and then pick the one that's most important, the one that has the most passion, the one you want to do in your life. And I took my piece of paper and circled that one little thing that I wanted to be. So we folded up the paper and put it in this thing called a self-addressed stamped envelope, and we mailed it back to ourselves. And I got back to um, Marietta, Georgia, opened it up, and I, I didn't even remember what I wrote. And I go, I want to be an ambassador for women's golf. Now, anybody who knew me at that time knew it was a very lofty goal for me, and I knew I had to give a lot of my time and effort and energy to achieve that goal, which I really didn't know what it meant at that time. I had no idea. But when I heard Dana Rader, God rest her soul, give her top 5% speech, she made me believe that there is plenty of room at the top, and there is. There is so much room up there, and I still have plenty of time to get there. Because Einstein determined that time is relative. In other words, the rate at which time passes depends on your frame of reference. And Ellen knew that too. Ellen said, time has a way of lagging, catching up, and passing only because of human definition. When time rules your life, it is time to throw away the watch. But don't worry, I am not throwing away this watch. <laughs> I will wear this watch with pride. This is the greatest honor of my career in the LPGA. I would not be standing here today if it weren't for my LPGA sisters and your support. And Rolex, thank you again. And I dedicate this honor tonight to everyone in my life that has given me their time. Thank you. Well, as we continue our look at the contenders for the Rolex Player of the Year, we turn our attention to a player who this year became the first Canadian golfer, male or female, to win multiple major championships. That came at her victory uh, at the Amundi Evian Championship this summer. She is currently third in the Rolex Player of the Year standing, so please welcome to the stage Brooke Henderson. And as Brooke makes her way to the stage and takes a seat, we will look back at her tremendous 2022 season. You took a little bit of time away from the game in the springtime, and when you came back, you've now had two victories. What did you find in that time off? It just really helped, um, you know, gain some perspective um, and kind of put my head in the right place. And it's Brooke Henderson. The winner of the ShopRite LPGA Classic for her 11th tour title at the age of 24. There it is, and Brooke Henderson is a major champion again. Yeah, to have two victories within a couple months of each other is really exciting. And yeah, I think it was just kind of getting the right mindset on. Um, and, you know, hopefully I can continue that momentum forward. It's been a good year. 
and Evian, uh, we're only spoiled by the guy doing the interview. He ruined, he ruined it. Um, it. First of all, I've, I've got to ask you about your health because you had a bit of a, a neck and back scare last week. You had to withdraw, but you shot 68 today, so you're off to a pretty good start. How are you feeling? Uh, yeah, definitely making progress. Uh, I had to make a few changes to the swing for this week, but I'm just really grateful uh, to be playing this week. Uh, and minus four was definitely a bit of a bonus today, um, but hopefully you can keep it rolling. And I'm grateful to be here tonight because it's always a very special evening put on by Rolex. When we, we look at your win um, at Evian, there were 13 lead changes on the final day, but you birdied um, the final hole to win. And then at the ShopRite LPGA Classic, it was a playoff, and you made an eagle to win. Uh, what is it about those, those big moments that brings the best out in you? I like the big moments. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's just been, it's been a really special year. It's been awesome to win twice again um, in the same year and to get my second major championship victory um, was really cool, especially at Evian, which is always so beautiful. And I always enjoy going to that tournament so much. So to be able to hoist that trophy uh, really meant a lot to me. And I feel like overall, it's been a very consistent year. And to be in the race to win the Rolex Player of the Year award um, is definitely a huge honor. And there's so many amazing and talented players out here. Um, so to even be you know, in the race this late in the season is really cool. And I'm just, yeah, I'm really happy with how things went this year. I do have to ask you about Canada and your position in, not only in golf, but in sports in Canada, winning those, those two major championships. Do you, do you feel uh, the love and the support? Because when we go to Canada, uh, especially this year in Ottawa, it was incredible watching you and the amount of people that came out. How much does, what does that mean to you? Yeah, the CP Women's Open will always hold a special place um, in my heart, and having won that event in 2018 made it even extra special, but just the fan support from back home is really phenomenal, and I broke attendance records um, up there this year, which is really cool, um, and I heard that they won another award here a couple of days ago, um, so it's just a really special event, and even down here, you know, today I had a bunch of crazy <laughs> Canucks out watching me, uh, lots of... Uh, flag waving and red and white uh, gear on. It's, it's really amazing and um, it's cool, you know, to be a part of history up there, um, to be the winningest golfer on the men's tour or the women's tour um, and then now to be the only one with two major championships. So it's really fun and hopefully I can keep setting that record a little bit higher. Well, you're a great credit to not only the tour but your country and I know you're lobbying to have the CP Women's Open just played in Ottawa every year, um, but they do have to move it around the country. It's going to Vancouver next year. You will get great support. You're a, you're a treasure for the tour. Thank you very much, Brooke, for your time, and Thank best you. of luck over the next three days. Well, and now it is time for us to salute the Rolex first-time winners for 2022. This year, Rolex and the LPGA welcomed an impressive 11 new winners to this elite club. This ties the record, by the way, for the most first-time winners ever in LPGA history in a single season, matching the number set back in 1995, which I believe included a certain Annika Sorenstam. Each player receives a Rolex watch to commemorate their first tour victory, and Arlo Laborde will be helping me uh, to make a, a presentation of an additional gift uh, when they come onto the stage this evening. So uh, let's now begin and start welcoming our winners to the stage. And we're going to start with a player who just six months after announcing herself on the world stage with an impressive rookie Solheim Cup debut for Team Europe, she became the first ever player from Ireland to win on the LPGA Tour. A final round 67 at the LPGA Drive-On Championship gave the 27-year-old a three-shot victory as she became the season's first Rolex first-time winner. It is, of course, Leona Maguire. A month after Leona became the first Irish winner on the LPGA Tour, another European country saw its 
first ever LPGA winner, thanks to an eagle on the second playoff hole at the Honda LPGA Thailand. This 28-year-old became the first player from Denmark to win on the LPGA Tour. Please welcome Nana Kurtz Madsen. Sitting eight shots behind the leader entering the final round of the JTBC Classic presented by Barbasol. This rookie from Thailand shot 64 on Sunday. That 64, which was the low round of the week, earned her a spot in her first LPGA playoff where she emerged victorious on the second playoff hole to become the season's third Rolex first time winner. Please welcome Ataya Titikun. Well, delivering on big stages is nothing new for this 25-year-old who burst onto the golf scene in 2019 as the inaugural winner of the Augusta National Women's Amateur. So it seemed fitting that her first LPGA Tour victory would come at a major championship in April. She became the first American to win the Chevron Championship since Brittany Linsicum in 2015. And she was, of course, the last Chevron winner to jump into Poppy's Pond at Mission Hills. It is Jennifer Cupcho. This player became the second rookie to win on the LPGA Tour in 2022 and the fifth Rolex first time winner. A course record final round 10 under par 62 at Dundonald Links, which included six consecutive birdies, propelled the 22-year-old uh, Japanese native to victory at the Trust Golf Women's Scottish Open. Please welcome Ayaka Furue. It took 15 years and a magical week capped off with grit and determination on oh, a bunker shot at the 76th hole which goes down in golf history for this 33 year old South African to become a Rolex first time winner at a major championship. She outlasted three time major champion Inji Chan in a four hole sudden death playoff to win the AIG Women's Open and become the third South African and first woman to win a major championship at Muirfield. It is Ashley Buhai. A member of the Ladies European Tour, this 22-year-old Swede captured her first LPGA Tour victory and LPGA Tour membership in spectacular fashion. She shot a career low 10 under 63 in the final round en route to capture a five shot victory at the ISPS Handa World Invitational presented by AVIV Clinics. Please welcome Maya Stark. In her 157th start on the LPGA Tour, this 32-year-old became the second South African to win on tour this year at the CP Women's Open. A two-part par on the 18th at Ottawa Hunt and Golf Club secured the victory and made her the eighth Rolex first-time winner of the 2022 season. It is, of course, Paula Rito. Two bogeys in her first three holes couldn't derail this 24-year-old from California from capturing her first LPGA Tour win in her third season on tour. She rebounded from a tough start to shoot a final round 66 and capture a one-shot victory at the Amazing Cree Portland Classic. Please welcome Andrea Lee.
11 years and 246 starts later, this LPGA veteran finally found her way to the winner's circle. It was an impressive victory as the 34-year-old from England led wire to wire at the LPGA Medihill Championship, staving off a final round charge from a major champion like Yuka Sasso, major champion in Georgia Hall, a major champion in Danielle Kang to become the 10th Rolex first time winner of 2022. It is Jody Hewitt Shadoff. Back to back rounds of seven under 65 over the final two days helped propel this 29 year old to her first ever. LPGA victory at the Toto Japan Classic. A victory made her the record tying 11th Rolex first time winner of 2022 and the fourth player from Scotland to ever win on the LPGA Tour. Please welcome Gemma Drybrum. Photograph there, walking right through the middle. We might have Arno come in. Does Arno need to be in there as well? How are we doing down there, folks? We're good? Thumbs up? We're getting the thumbs up. Um, congratulations to you all. I'm going to pick a few of you out for a little chat. Now, we are going to hear from all of you. Uh, during our uh, halftime show whilst folks here in the ballroom are uh, eating. Uh, but I'm going to start with Jennifer Cupcho. Yeah, oh, <laughs> that wasn't the look that I was expecting there. Um, <laughs> step forward, so we, there we go. Um, I, I've got to ask you about, about big moments because you won the Augusta National Women's Amateur and then you win the Chevron Championship in pretty spectacular fashion considering you, it was your first win. What was different between those two victories? Because you had a sizable lead in Mission Hills, but then Augusta National, you were battling all the way to the end. Yeah, it's definitely helpful um, out here to have a big lead going into the final round. Um, but I think just in general, I played really well both times. Um, I definitely like big moments. So um, that was definitely um, pretty awesome to win at Mission Hills and be the last person. And, and in general, this has been an amazing year for you. You got three wins on the LPGA Tour. Just sum up uh, what this year has meant to you. Um, it's unreal. <laughs> um, yeah, to come out here, I, I was playing really well as an amateur, um, but it's really hard to win out here. So to have broke through in my fourth year now um, to finally win, it, it really means a lot to me. Well, congratulations. It was great to see. And you had a big wedding this year as well. So congratulations uh, on that. Who else are we going to talk to here? Um, let's talk to Ashley Buhai. There you are. I'm trying to see where you were. Um, I've got to ask you about the bunker shot on 18, because that's going to go down in history as, as one of the great shots, uh, certainly a major championship golf. Tell us about what happened. Um, well, you know, obviously the moment makes it huge and, and what could come from it, but Inji had already hit a shot from that same bunker in the first player fall to a few feet. So, you know, I got in there feeling pretty comfortable. Um, my bunker shot, my bunker play is my strong point. So a little downhill lie and the wind was behind us. And you just kind of had to get it out and hopefully it would roll down to the hole and lucky for me it did that. You know, that's what we say when we're playing bunker shots. Just get it out and it'll roll down to the hole. There was a bit more pressure for you. How were you able to handle that pressure? Because you kind of lost, lost it a little bit at 15, but of course at the end of the day you're the champion. Yeah, obviously in the moment. Um, I'd done so well that whole week on focusing on just sticking to my routine, uh, keeping my rhythm, and obviously after the triple bogey on 15, I just stuck to those things and that's what got me through. And um, I think we don't know when those moments are going to come, so I really dug deep and obviously Inji being a, a major champion, I knew it wasn't going to be easy to take her down, but um, we played together KPMG the first two days, so I told her, well, she got one, and then I got the next one. Well, congratulations. It was a great win and a, and a wonderful moment in your career. Where's, where's Jody? I'm going to come to the other side. Here we go. Um, Jody, congratulations on that, uh, that victory. It wasn't that long ago in California. 
Uh, oh, we got a round of applause. You've got, you got some fans here. Um, your husband is a sportscaster. Did he, I, I was going to ask you on the green there, did he lead his broadcast with your win that night? He wasn't actually working that night, so... No. All the nights? All the nights. <laughs> um, what, what was it about that week that made you think, hey, this, this could be it for me? Um, I think I got off to a really good start. Obviously, I, I shot eight under on the first day, which um, it, I just felt really comfortable around that golf course. And, um, you know, I was, I was swinging it really well, and the putts were dropping that week. So, um, yeah, just something about the whole week just felt really special. What was it that kept you chasing that win? Because you've had some, some highs and lows, especially with injuries in your yeah. career. Um, you know, I, like I said before, um, I... I I kind of got to a point where I didn't think it was ever going to happen, um, but this, this year um, specifically, you know, I've just been playing really, really well, and I just started to believe in myself again, and, um, you know, I finally got there after a few years. <laughs> well, congratulations. Uh, a big win for you. Well done in 246 stars. Where's Gemma? She's at the other end. Oh, my gosh. How did you guys get separated? You were, like, the, the, together when you came on the stage. Um, what, what an amazing week for you. Uh, beginning of the year, did you, did you think this would be possible to break through and get that first win? Well, this time last year I was getting ready for Q Series, so I guess realistically probably not, but it wasn't my goals um, to win a, an LPGA event. It's always been a dream of mine. So um, it was always kind of in my mind, but if I was honest, probably not this year. But, you know, you know dreams can come true and hard work pays off. Uh, in golf, there can be one week that changes everything that then leads you on to other things. Was, was that the case this, week for you, uh, this year for you, and, and what was that week? Well, I think, um, honestly, in the match play in Vegas, I think I got a lot of confidence from that. I played Andrea right next to me here. Um, she ended up beating me, but I got so much confidence from that week, and I kind of just snowballed from there, got into the majors from there, and um, then just brought a lot of confidence into Japan and even Korea the week before, so I was kind of building on a lot of good events. You, you weren't in the field, were you, in Vegas at the beginning of the week? That's correct, yeah. Anna Norquist, shout out to Anna. Um, she withdrew. <laughs> I got in last minute. I wasn't actually going to even travel because I was first reserve, didn't expect anyone to withdraw. Um, so, yeah, I was very lucky to get in and that made the most of it. It's a great story, and now you're a winner on the LPGA Tour, along with the other 10 players on the stage here. Give it up for the Rolex first-time winners for 2022. <laughs> are, you good? are you good with photos? Are you good? Okay, get the thumbs up. Um, well, that brings us to the end of our first half uh, of the awards. Um, inside the ballroom here, it is uh, time for dinner. Uh, but we're going to join uh, the halftime show now to hear from some of the biggest names in the women's game. The evening has flown by so, so far with the night already halfway in the books. We have heard some from incredible people. We spoke to some people out on the green carpet. We saw all of the Rolex first time winners up here and the speeches tonight have just been awesome. But don't go anywhere because the party is just getting started. So we're going to let these people eat. And for now, I'm going to toss out to Amy Rogers, who is with a very special guest. Thanks so much, Hope. That's right. I am here with our first guest of this little dinner break, Molly Marcusamon, the LPGA commissioner, kind enough to step away from your dinner to spend a little time with us. Molly, I can't believe how fast the time has gone. I remember sitting here with you last year. You're just a few months into the job. Now here we are. It's been over a year. What's this year been like for you? Yeah, I mean, it's been an incredible year. I mean, just listening to Sorry, listening to everything going on on stage and hearing all the memories and seeing the emotion, it's been a whirlwind. I think I've, I went to 29 events. I've been all over the world. I've seen players in every sort of moment of emotion and highs and lows and our staff just digging in on everything. Being able to celebrate here today is just a culmination of a great year. Okay, you have a lot to pick from in attending 29 events. Yeah. Give me a highlight. What was one of your favorites? Well, I am a hockey player. I was a hockey player, so going to Canada and seeing, was it the 
what hole was that? The 15th hole, the 14th? I can't remember, but having the hockey board set up around the tee box and then the players actually wearing a hockey jersey as they sort of walked up the fairway. Were you rocking a jersey that week? I wasn't rocking one, but I would have. Had uh, Lawrence and Ryan and the team given me a jersey, I would have worn it all week. Yeah, that was pretty fun. Pretty cool. Okay, we're gonna have some fun tomorrow too. The 2023 LPGA Tour schedule is officially coming out. I'm not gonna put you on the spot, but give us a little bit, you know, something. Something to get us excited for tomorrow. What can we expect? Well, I mean, I think you're gonna see big dollars, right? I mean, I think we measure ourselves by how many tournaments, we measure ourselves by the, the purses that our players are playing for. It will be the biggest in history. Um, which is just a little sneak preview, but you know, great tournaments, great partners. Um, I think you know, amazing golf courses, um, and again, a lot of elevation of, of commitment by our tournament operators, our title partners. It's a really good schedule, and then again, to have, as Tom said, to have the Hanwha um, uh, International Crown and to have Solheim Cup next year. So there's a, a lot of big moments on the schedule for next year. Yeah, that's going to be huge. Crown and Solheim Cup. I'm excited. I hope I'm both of those. That's going to be so awesome. Molly, before I let you go, this is such a special night, especially for the players. Talk about what it means to them to have this opportunity to be recognized for what they did this year. Yeah, I mean, first of all, the awards are really meaningful, most of them given by the players themselves and, and to their fellow players. And I think that's where they really have the most pride when their fellow players who they're out here with all year. It's not easy being out on tour. They, they're, you know, they, they might play in 20, 25 events um, to be recognized by their players for specific accomplishments is huge. But also 11 first time, you know, Rolex first time winners, you know, and the, the emotion of that win, you know, a lot of them have worked out here for, for a decade or more to be able to achieve this kind of elusive goal and to see them on stage being celebrated for those accomplishments, pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Molly Marcusamon, I could talk to you all night, but I will let you get to your dinner. Thank you for spending some time with us and I'm excited to see that schedule tomorrow. All right, thanks Amy, you'll get a sneak preview. All right, let's go ahead and pivot to our next guest who is waiting in the wings, major champion. NG Chun. Let's take a look at some highlights from her major victory earlier this season. And here she is with a critical birdie at the par 5 16th. This was to tie Lexi Thompson at the KPMG Women's PGA Championship at Congressional. And she drained that one to take the lead. Now here she is, final par save at the last, the 72nd hole to pull out that one stroke victory ahead of Lexi Thompson. I mean, the whole week just seemed to belong to NG Chun after she opened with that round of 64, the low round of the tournament and the lowest round in 10 years at the KPMG Women's PGA Championship. And here she is, the winner of that major, your third major title. You're sitting here with me. You got to see some of those highlights. What are you thinking, seeing back on uh, some of those moments from over the summer? It was amazing and it was great memory. And then when I got the trophy, then I was so emotionally. So even when I look at the screen, then I got little tears come, came back. <laughs> you are recognized tonight with a very special award. What did it mean to you to receive this year's Founders Award? Because I think to receive like any award as a player on the LPGA is special, but I think this one is even more special because it is from the LPGA players who I have a great respect and admiration for. So I feel so honored and, and thankful to the LPGA and my friends on the tour. You have such an incredible story, such resilience, going all those years without a win, without a major, that bout that you dealt with the back injury, with depression. What do you hope that people take away from your story? No, I think everyone have like a little bit of up and down, but when I didn't play well, absolutely it was really sad, but I believe I'm on the process so I just keep doing it and I want to just share my good energy and positive thing and I want to show to the fans and all the uh, people all over the world I and mean, it was helped me a lot and then I just I appreciate it and love to 
meet uh, fans yeah, from everywhere that helped me a lot. Yeah. Such an incredible story of resilience. Congratulations on the Founders Award and on that big major victory this season. Great to see you, Angie. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, now we will get ready for our next guest. Here is a look back at some highlights from her win this year. Here's some highlights from Marina Alex's victory earlier this season. Hi. Hey there, guys, here alongside Marina Alex. We were just talking about you getting that win, waiting several years to return to the win winner's circle at the Palos Verdes Championship. What kept you working all those years to get that second win? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of challenges, and I, I know a lot of our first-time winners have probably experienced a lot of similar challenges. But, I mean, you always just know that there's still some great golf ahead of you. I think it's one of those sports that you feel like you can always keep improving. So, you know, for all of us out there, we're just trying to continue to get better and just keep getting out there and trying to get win after win. I mean, it's really hard. It is. Um, the tour is just in such an amazing place that getting each victory, you know, it's, it's pretty sweet and you have to cherish those moments. What did you remember back seeing those first timers? Were there some memories that came back when you got that first Absolutely. win in Portland? Yeah, I remember standing up there um, and Nellie was in my the same year, first time winner and a, and a couple other players and I look at their careers. I think Gabby Lopez was another first time winner that year and just um, I know how impressive they've become and you know just the careers that of these first time winners have had, you know, even later on in their careers and continue to win and have success and I think it just opens the door for you know the next part of your life. You had talked about you weren't sure if your mind and body would cooperate to getting that yeah. second win as we're getting a little older it gets a little tougher these days. Yeah, so how do you reset like what are your goals now as you get into this different stage of your career? Yeah it's a little bit different um, you know every week physically doesn't feel perfect um, it doesn't feel like I was when I was 25, so I feel like when I do feel well, um, there is a little bit of pressure to capitalize on that, but I do have a lot of experience. You know, I'm finishing my ninth year. I'm going to be starting um, in my tenth year, a decade out here, so I think the experience of those moments, um, I have a lot of them to fall back on, so I feel a little bit more seasoned, you know, when I'm in those contention situations, and I, um, I you know, I just, I, I look forward to the weeks where I, I feel like I'm firing on all cylinders, and I I wait for them. They're like they're not every week anymore, but that's okay. <laughs> Being a veteran now, how do you yeah. approach this off season coming up? Do you keep grinding? Do you take a little <laughs> bit of a break? What's I the approach? I am not doing veteran things. <laughs> I am actually going to play the Australian Open. <laughs> I know. So I leave on Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. Um, I haven't been to Melbourne in ages, and. I'm really excited to get back there. Victoria Golf Club is one of my favorites, and Kingston Heath is also part of the uh, the tournament rotation for the week. So I, I just really want to experience the Australian Open um, at one point again before, you know, the end of my career. I don't know when that is, but, you know, it, it, I may next year not feel like I want to make that kind of a commitment to travel. <laughs> it's pretty far. Oh, uh, yeah, it <laughs> takes, like, forever to get there. Yeah. Why there? Was that something on your bucket list? You just wanted to get to Austria? Uh, I just think I really, you know, COVID kind of changed the whole um, – approach of us, you know, being a part of having the Australian Open on our tour um, as part of our regular rotation. And I love the country. I, I've played great there. I mean, I've had a lot of really wonderful success. It's it's one of my favorite places in the world to play golf. And I just, I, I wanted to go back. What else is still on your bucket list? Anywhere else <laughs> in the world you'd like to travel? Um, yeah, there's definitely some places. Um, I I think a little bit more of Europe, not for golf tournaments, would be wonderful. Um, need to definitely do a, a family trip to Italy, and I would love to go to Iceland, and I still haven't been to South America. There's there's a lot on the list, if, if I can tolerate it. <laughs> well, that sounds like a, quite a bucket list, a lot of must-see places. Marina Alex, great to see you. Thanks. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. All right, to another world traveler, we're going to welcome in Leona McGuire, another one of the first time winners this season. Actually, the first of the 11 first time winners this year. Leona, there was so much hype with you 
coming out of college, the amateur ranks. Did you feel a lot of pressure to get that first win? Yeah, I mean, I think being one of the first from your country to, to win on tour and to sort of have that representation, there was a lot of weight on my shoulders, but it's something I enjoy. And you want to be in those moments. You want to have a chance to play against the best players in the world. And it was nice to get it done so early in the season this year. Yeah, how did that impact your season to win so early in the year the LPGA Drive-On Championship? It was back in February. It seems like a lifetime ago. But getting a win so early, how did that affect you over the coming months? Yeah, I think 2021 was huge for me with Solheim Cup and, and playing well in the majors. That was a huge confidence boost. And um, it was nice to sort of get my schedule together so early in the season. I knew I was in the majors and the bigger events. and. Um, yeah, just really tried to build on it for the rest of the year and bit by bit feeling more and more comfortable out here on the LPJ. With your win, you became the first from Ireland to win on the LPJ Tour. What was the response like back home? Yeah, I mean, it was incredible. I've had huge support from Ireland throughout my entire career and it was nice to, to give them something to cheer about. I got a letter from the president of Ireland, which was, was pretty cool. So, um, yeah, it was nice to go back home and celebrate with everybody. and. Yeah, I mean, the guys have been doing so well on, on the PGA Tour for so long. It was nice to have, um, even if it's just one win, um, for the girls. I was talking with Maureen Alex about her bucket list, places like she'd like to travel. What's next for you? Next season, what would be your one thing you want to check off your bucket list? Yeah, I mean, Spain next week for me to finish off the LET season. But right now I'm looking forward to getting home for Christmas and, and we'll worry about next year, next year. But um, yeah, I mean, obviously the majors are, are the main target for next year. Yeah, what do you do over the holidays with your family? Do you guys have a big get together? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Christmas is big at home in Ireland. Uh, Dad is a big family, so we'll all get together at Christmas. And my grandmother's turning 96 this year on New Year's Day, so we'll, uh, we'll celebrate that and then get back to work in Orlando, get ready for the season to start again. Plenty for the Maguire family to be celebrating this year. Leona, congratulations on getting that first win. Always great to catch up with you. Thanks for the time. Enjoy the offseason. Thanks, Amy. All right, we are excited to say hello to, yes, yet another first time winner this season. When there's 11, there's so many to be able to catch up with. And here is a look at some highlights from Andrea Lee's victory. This was at the Amazing Cree Portland Classic at Columbia Edgewater Country Club. And this was Lee. She was tied for the lead heading into the final round. That was going to set up a birdie. She was able to take the outright lead and now another birdie here at 16 and that one drops. That gets her to 19 under par. And then here she is at the 72nd hole. Just a nice little short win there to finish up for the win and a one stroke victory over Daniela Darkea. Lee becomes a first time winner thanks in large part to that final round 66. Five birdies on the back nine. What a way to get it done. How did it feel to become a first time winner on the LPGA Tour? Yeah, it was pretty incredible. A uh, dream come true for me. Something that I've always dreamed of growing up as a little girl, wanting to win on the LPGA Tour. Um, but yeah, that back nine was really special, um, especially being two over after three holes that day. Uh, just kept it going and managed to pull off a win by one. So it was very, very exciting. You make it sound simple, but what did you say to yourself in that situation to be able to battle back? Yeah, uh, I've never been in that position before, being in contention um, or you know being at the top of the leaderboard going into the final stretch, the last few holes um, to win an LPGA event. And there were a lot of deep breaths, um, and I just try to calm myself down and stayed really patient. Um, you know, I didn't know that I was going to have eight birdies that day, um, so. It was just trusting my game and trusting myself and ultimately got it done. So it was, it was a very special week for me. All right, well, this wouldn't be the Rolex Awards if I didn't ask you about this beauty that I see <laughs> on your wrist now, a Rolex first time winner, receiving a Rolex for that achievement. Tell me what you think of this beauty. I absolutely love it. I spent so much time researching on Rolex's website, um, you know, which watch I wanted the most. And um, I'm absolutely in love with it. I've always wanted a Rolex, so. Tell me about the details of this one that you did pick out. Yeah, I wanted the two-tone gold and the silver or steel uh, Jubilee bracelet and then the silver face. And I didn't want it, the diamonds <laughs> on the face. So it's perfect. <laughs> Bigger highlight of the year, the win or the Rolex? I gotta say the win, <laughs> but I, I, this was a huge goal of mine to be able to win 
for the first time on the LPGA Tour and to be able to get the Rolex. So it comes in a package. <laughs> Your friends and family, your support team played a huge role in you getting that win as well. How important was it to be able to share that victory with them? Yeah, it was very special. Um, my dad was there on the 18th green after I, I, fin I finished out and it was just so, such an emotional moment for the both of us. He was smart and left his glasses on, but he was definitely, there were some tears shed by him as well. Um, but yeah, it was a very incredible moment for, bo for the both of us. and. You know, he caddied for me earlier in the year when I won my very first professional win on the Epson Tour. So just to have him be there for me, you know, when I won my first LPGA event, just kind of came full circle. And it was just a, a very proud moment for the both of us. That's such a special moment. We need to get Dad a Rolex, too, to say thank you for all the support, right? <laughs> yeah, he's right there. He's like, yeah. He's like, I like that idea. <laughs> Andrea Lee, congratulations on the first win. Enjoy the rest of the night. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, let's get ready to say hello to our next guest that's coming up. Yes, you guessed it. It's another first-time winner this season. Here, let's go ahead and take a look at some highlights from her win just a few months ago. Something that Sophie Gustafson said she loved about her game. Oh. She's going to like that birdie as well. Here's Maya Stark for another birdie. It's another one. I think it's safe to say this is going to be a birdie, though. And it is. And everyone's been left trailing. Uh, the brilliance of Stark. This is for number nine of the day. So, so impressive. So talented. Well, that's the finish she deserves. Welcome to the LPGA Tour, Maya Stark. That is one of the best final round performances in women's golf in 2022. Doesn't get much better than that. Maya, it just felt like a fairy tale moment, you getting your first win on the LPGA Tour and then to become a member. We saw a few of your highlights a minute ago. What were you thinking just looking back on that win? Uh, just how crazy it was that a week before I shot minus 10, I shot plus eight and had like an anxiety attack, like everything. And then just how crazy, how crazy fast it could just flip around. I mean, I think I spent like at least three hours in a row crying on the Monday of that week. And then to just like turn it around and come back and play the golf of my life. Like that's, I'm very proud of myself for that. I'm sure it's not as easy as you're making it sound to just turn it around like that. What was the key to be able to finding a way to harness that positive energy and to get that win? It was a lot about just having fun. You know, we've been out for three weeks, uh, pretty stressful. You know, lots of things have happened, played two majors. Um, so I was just talking with my mental coach on the Monday and uh, we were trying to figure something out, but I just kept crying and he was like, Maya, can you even... Like, do you feel like you can find some solution right now? And I just said, no. And he said, okay, I'll call you back later tonight and we'll see if, if you can come up with something then. And then it was just about having fun. I know I scheduled, um, scheduled my practice rounds with uh, people I like and it was just about having fun that week. And, and it just, yeah, turn around. In addition to your win on the LPGA Tour, two wins as well on the Ladies European Tour. What has this season just been like for you overall? Lots of up and downs. I feel like um, just struggling with like how much I can play and knowing that. And then, um, well, it's been obviously very good, but you don't see like the, the down parts. You didn't see when I shot that plus eight at the British Open on the last round and how sad I was after that. So it's, it's been more of a roller, uh, a roller coaster than most people think, uh, actually. And yeah, lots of ups, but also a lot of downs. So. A lot of players aren't open about those challenges and the ups and downs that they go through, but you've been pretty open about the challenges you faced, you know, mentally, like you said. Why have you wanted to share that with people? Uh, well, a few years ago, we were talking, me and my mental coach were talking about values, and um, I came to the conclusion that one of my values were honesty, and I think 
the more people share their struggles, uh, the less like stigma it is about it, and and it's nice to know that um, well other people are struggling too, and it's not always it's not like a fairy tale out here. It really goes up and down, and when we start talking about it is when we find the solutions for it and hopefully we can like, get better help on tour and everything and I've been very lucky and have had a lot of help from the Swedish Golf Federation uh, to have my mental coach that I've known for I think six years now and been working with so uh, just knowing the importance of like having everything kind of balanced with the social things um, and golf and everything in the life and yeah just trying to push for younger, younger players too and know that it's it's important to have a little bit of everything. Just everything has to work for you to play well. We were just talking a few minutes ago about your beautiful Rolex that you actually got to design. Tell me, what was that process like? And let's let's take a look at what you put together. Uh, yeah, so uh, we got... I didn't know that we got to design it ourselves. I thought it was just like a standard thing. So I probably took like one and a half months to decide. I went to a watch store to um, check out just the options, uh, but I finally settled on this, and yeah, I like it. Um, I figured it would match match the um, my clothes today, and uh, yeah, I tried to go for something very like classic. What is it like now to see it in person to know that you have this Rolex? It's pretty um, uh, pretty awesome. Yeah, um, it feels weird. I've never had anything nice like this before, so it's. Uh, it's pretty dang cool to have it. It's kind of heavy, but yeah, I don't even know where to put it like when I'm at home because it's just so valuable. I feel like I'll walk around with it on me all the time because I'm scared of losing it. Just don't take it off, Maya. Just wear it all the time. <laughs> Good plan. Maya, congratulations on a great season. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. All right, let's go ahead and get ready to see our next guest Here's a few highlights from Paula Rito's breakthrough win this season at the CP Women's Open. This is Rito. She had a huge birdie opportunity here at Ottawa Hunt and Golf Club. This one at the ninth, she had shot 31 on the front and took a four stroke lead at the turn. Thanks to monster putts like that. Well, Nellie Corda was also making a move on that Sunday. Here she is at the 12th. This is her second from the fairway. Hold that one for Eagle. She would go on to finish second there at the CP Women's Open. And now here's Rito again, carded a final round 67 to win by one, capturing her first LPGA Tour victory and her 157th start. She also set the course and tournament record with an opening round of 62. And now I'm here with the winner of the CP Women's Open, Paula Rito. What are you thinking, looking back on those highlights? Um, what a good week it was. Um, so proud of myself and being able to stick through it and day to day and, and being able to come out with the win. Um, you know, it's just awesome and I, and I really want to do it again. 157 starts, that's not nothing. What kept you motivated to keep working to get that first win? Yeah. You know what? I, I knew I could win on tour. I knew I could do it. Um, it was just a matter of finding small things that worked for me, my swing, the technique, and that, those kind of things that I need to hone in. And um, being able to just to stick with it and not give up and, and just something told me just keep going, keep going, because I had to go back to Symmetra Tour for, you know, 2019. And, um, you know, a few things here and there, um, but just being able to stick it out, knowing that I can do it and sort of just grind and fix what I needed to do and, and, and come in strong. Um, yeah, so just that kept me going. What has the effect been now getting that win? How's that affected you as a person and a player? Um, you know what? I feel the same, <laughs> but um, I could probably pick my schedule next year a little bit better. Um, being able to not have to play so many tournaments in a row because you do get exhausted. And so maybe more quality, which will help me. And I can um, then focus more on the things that I have to do during those off weeks. Um, so I think that's what I'm looking forward to. And a wonderful icing on the cake. You get this beautiful Rolex for being a Rolex first time winner. Now I understand you guys got to actually design these. Can you tell me about this one and why you chose what you did? 
Yes, um, so I, I was really exciting. You know, thank you, Rolex, for, for, for giving us a watch for the first time winners. And um, I kind of went with a little bit bigger. So I think they give us a 31. I maybe I went with 36. And I just, uh, the middle part, I um, designed a little more flowery kind of look. Um, just something that I know I would wear all the time, which I will. Um, and just, it's nice to have something expensive on your wrist. <laughs> My most expensive piece for sure. <laughs> I was like I was saying to Maya, don't ever take it off. Just keep it on all the time. <laughs> this is a fabulous way to celebrate, but any other ways that you celebrated finally getting that first win? Um, yes, no, um, good way to celebrate, but just, you know, with my family and my friends and, and all the close people around me, um, we enjoyed it and we just, you know, keep looking back and keep bringing those memories, you know, back so I can, you know, learn from it and, and just, um, yeah, it was such a good week and, you know, it was awesome. Well, congratulations. Much deserved, much awaited victory. Paula Rito, thanks for the time. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Well, we are just plowing through this dinner. It's flying by when we've gotten to catch up with so many incredible guests, all those first time winners this season. It's just been fascinating being able to hear what it was like for them to get those breakthrough wins on the LPGA Tour and not to mention getting to look at all these incredible Rolexes that all of these players have gotten to design. Just what an incredible treat for all that they have achieved this season. And I am joined by golf journalist, Adam Stanley. Do you have a Rolex up your sleeve there, Adam? I don't know how much higher my jacket can go <laughs> before I find the Rolex, but uh, I'm going to have to converse with a few folks in order to track one down, I think. Unfortunately, <laughs> no, is the, is the short answer. Yours might be coming out with the dessert. Maybe yeah. it's just coming a little bit later. Adam, you follow the women's game very closely. As I mentioned, there's 11 first-time winners this season. What's jumped out to you from what we've seen from these winners this year? I think the, the biggest one for me personally was Jennifer Cupcho. I mean, I think it was inevitable that she was going to win. It was surprising that it took her this long to do it, but obviously she did it, and she did it in a big way repeatedly this year, which was very impressive. So I think it also speaks to the parity of the women's game is, is just wrapped in there are so many first-time winners in a year when there could have been a lot of repeat winners, and there are some names that are surprising mm -hmm. that they're first-time winners mm -hmm. as well. So obviously up here tonight uh, being celebrated for their accomplishments and just kind of an impressive uh, array, an impressive body of work for those 11 women uh, tonight to be celebrated and, and obviously uh, some great accomplishments on the golf course as well for them this year. You mentioned some surprises. You know, there were so many this season. We thought we were going to see, you know, kind of a rival, a back and forth between Jin Young Ko and Nelly Korda. That didn't really come, you know, to pass. What jumped out to you? Any surprises this season? I think it was kind of the, the health issues of some of the top stars because obviously, you know, the human body is a unique thing. You can't always predict what's going to happen and what isn't. Nelly Korda, of course, is probably the most prominent of, of those who had to take so much time off because of a health challenge. And now we have here at the end of the year, Brooke Henderson uh, with her own health challenge. It's just not something that we see from someone like Brooke who usually plays a lot of events. Uh, of course, that schedule has been impacted because of the COVID-19 pandemic the last couple of years. Uh, but to have Brooke Henderson come out and say, hey, my back is sore. I, I can't do this. It, it was a little bit jarring. So uh, certainly some surprise winners, uh, some surprise successes. But I think those health challenges with some of the big names uh, was kind of the thing where you, you sit back and you think, wow, was not expecting that this year. Jin Young Ko, as well, as you mentioned, you know, obviously battling a, a wrist injury uh, last week and, and at the, the latter half of the season. So, you know, again, you kind of hope, hope that the time off will provide them the time that they need to come back to full health at 100 percent for next season. You touched on Brooke Henderson, and I would be remiss as a Canadian golf journalist. Yes. I have to ask you about the state of Canadian golf, especially with the women's game. How would you assess where it's at right now? Yeah, I mean, Brooke is certainly in her own category. Two major championships, 12 wins in the LPGA Tour, the winningest Canadian male or female in the professional game. So we like to put Brooke in her own category. I am personally super excited for the girls who are 10, 11, 12 years old who are seeing Brooke do what she's doing and are getting inspired to hopefully want to be just like her because on the men's side, we see that right now with, with all the guys who are winning on the PGA Tour they are part of this Mike Weir generation. Mike Weir, of course, winning 
the 2003 Masters, and it has inspired an entire generation of Canadian golfers on the PGA Tour. So I'm excited to see what happens with the, the Brooke Henderson generation. Uh, two wins for her, including a major, an absolutely fabulous 2022 for her. She, of course, spoke a little bit earlier uh, at, in the running to win the Rolex Player of the Year, uh, and just hopefully she manages to play 72 holes this week, uh, but a wonderful season regardless. Yeah, absolutely. She's right in the hunt there for the Rolex Player of the Year. You know you've had a great season. All right, speaking of seasons, the schedule for next season is coming out tomorrow. Molly Marcusamon teasing. We're going to see some big dollars for next year. But what's on your bucket list? What would you like to see, Adam? You know, I'm excited to see how global this tour can get. I think the LPGA Tour has been long known as as a global tour. I'm excited to see maybe are we going to some other places? Are we going to go to have a nice little trip across the pond, maybe across the Pacific, across the Atlantic? Where are we going? What are we doing? Personally, of course, I'm very excited for the CP Women's Open to go back to Shaughnessy in Vancouver. Shaughnessy has hosted the Men's Canadian Open before. Vancouver is one of our, our, our most culturally significant cities in our country so excited about that uh, the major championship schedule excited to see what happens there uh, certainly from a Chevron uh, championship perspective uh, obviously heading to Houston next year so uh, there's a lot of exciting things there uh, and these women deserve all of the money that they are going to be playing for I think that now is as magical a time as any for for women in sports uh, we've seen some wonderful speeches tonight we've seen some wonderful sporting efforts from these women over the last 12 months uh, and I I think the fact that they will be playing for, for more money from what Molly said next year uh, is well deserved for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Adam, longtime friend and longtime golf journalist, I appreciate you stepping away from your dinner to spend some time with me. I'll let you get back in there, see if they brought you that Rolex yet. I'm sure it's you with know. your dessert. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us and sticking with us during this dinner break. I'll send you back inside to Hope Arnett and the second half of the award show. Thanks so much, Amy. Personally, this is a night that I look forward to all year. I get to travel with the tour and I see the incredible things that these women do. And tonight is just the perfect opportunity to honor them and celebrate all of their success. So all of you people watching, don't go anywhere because the show must go on. So for now, I'm gonna toss it up to Tom and he's gonna tell us who won the Commissioner's Award. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome back to the stage, Tom Abbott. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, inside the ballroom here at the Ritz-Carlton Golf Resort Naples, I hope you enjoyed uh, the wonderful uh, dinner uh, that we put on for you this evening. But we begin the second half of our presentation with the coveted Commissioner's Award. And so I would like to welcome to the stage the LPGA Commissioner, Molly Marcusamon. Thank you, Tom. Uh, what, what, a, what a year, uh, what a week, and, and what, a, what a night. You know, congratulations to all our winners, Inji, Elizabeth, Carol, and thank you so far to Lydia and Brooke for your insight and for, for being with us here tonight. And to all of our 11 Rolex first time winners, congratulations. I just wanna say thank you from the bottom of my heart and from the entire LPGA to Rolex for this evening. And thank you for your longstanding partnership, um, which really truly elevates us in every way in our true pursuit of perpetual excellence. Um, And, and thank you, Tom, for so beautifully sort of articulating the tremendous successes of the year and for um, thanking so many of our supporters. Um, golf is obviously an individual sport, but the LPGA is absolutely a team sport. It takes so many people to make this organization work and to allow us to, to reach our goals and have our players live their dreams. So I want to also just thank Terry Duffy and the CME Group for their tremendous 16-year game-changing support of the LPGA and for this amazing week. And last, I just want to thank, you know, we have so many people in this room that make the LPGA work. You know, thank you to our tournament partners, to our sponsors, to our board members, to our broadcast partners, to the media that's here. 
And of course, to our amazing LPGA staff. I, I think the one of the biggest surprises that I've had being the commissioner for the last 14 months is how passionate of a team that we have. I mean, every day they wake up trying to make this organization better. It's a small but very mighty team. So I would love it if everyone would give that team a big round of applause. And it's, it's amazing to have some of our, our game's legends here with us tonight. Annika, Nancy, Judy, thank you guys for being here tonight. Thank you. So the, the award that I get to, to give is really special. It's distinct for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is the person receiving it here tonight. For the last 31 years, the Commissioner's Award has honored a person or, or an organization that has contributed uniquely to the LPGA and its members. Someone who has furthered the cause of women's golf and who possesses the character and standards of the highest order. This year, we, we honor a man who lives those traits every day. Since 2010, Mike King has served as the president and CEO, CEO of Volunteers of America. In addition to VOA being one of the nation's oldest and largest nonprofit providers of affordable housing, since 1896, the organization has been a beacon, a true beacon for the most vulnerable, a helping hand, providing a helping hand to those struggling with hunger, homelessness, and helplessness, those who feel lost and alone. VOA offers services for those with disabilities, behavioral and mental health services, children, youth, and family programs, correctional reentry programs, and they provide help to those with substance abuse, as well as veteran services and care for older adults. VOA is, is a helping hand when it's needed most. For a dozen years, Mike King has led that effort on a national stage. As national CEO, Mike spearheaded the first paid advertising and marketing campaign for Volunteers of America. If you've watched our LPGA broadcasts, you've seen those commercials. He created partnerships that provide millions of dollars to help formerly help a homeless veterans. He also serves as chairman of the board of Leading Age, a community of nonprofit organizations helping older adults. But not a word of that resume is mentioned by those who know Mike. People usually don't talk about the tremendous fundraising, which is about $1.1 billion now. They don't bring up the 16,000 employees at VOA or the executive positions held that, that Mike has held at the United Way or the leadership coaching he did at Hewlett Packard or that he was awarded the White House's Outstanding Volunteer Action Award by President Ronald Reagan. Instead, the first words that people say about Mike King are kindness, service, humility, generosity, and gratitude. Ask anyone to describe Mike, and, and you won't go far be before hearing. He is one of the nicest, most genuine people you will ever meet. That's a common and almost universal refrain. For all he has done in business and in the nonprofit world, no one I know has ever, no one I know has ever heard a harsh word from him or of him. That in and of, it, in of, it, in, in of itself is extraordinary. From the first conversation I had with him on my very first day as the commissioner to a recent tour operator meeting, he goes out of his way to be supportive, to be complimentary, to be, encourage, to be encouraging, and honestly, to be inspiring. He goes across the room to say, hey, you just did a great job there. When you feel like you're having a crisis of confidence or when you just need that extra little pat, Mike is always there to do that. His history with the LPGA speaks to his character. When the, first, when the tour first came to Dallas for what was then called the North Texas Shootout, Mike read about it and reached out to the tournament director to just take a small sponsorship. After a couple years, the tournament was sort of being held together with duct tape and bailing wire. That's when my predecessor, Mike Wan, and one of our partnership team members, Scott Enzyme, who is here tonight, called Mike King and said, if you're interested in keeping this tournament in Dallas, we need a sponsor. Otherwise, it's probably going away. Mike said, I have a board meeting tomorrow. I'll call you right after. That was 10 years ago. Today, Volunteers of America is one of our most valued partners because of the spirit and the energy and the commitment of Mike King. But that's not all he did. 
when the tournament was looking to create a trophy, Mike wanted to honor one of his heroes, whom he felt deserved to have special recognition. So he reached out to a Dallas local, I think one that we've all heard of, one of our LPGA Hall of Fame members, Kathy Whitworth. Not only did Kathy design the trophy on the back of a napkin, vintage Whitworth, it bears her name. Winners now raise that Kathy Whitworth trophy. Earlier, th earlier this year, Mike relied again on his commitment to finding solutions through partnership. He helped reach out to exe executives at As Ascendant, a leading title and escrow company, to join forces and to grow the event. Together, Ascendant and Volunteers of America increased the purse and expanded the tournament's impact in the Dallas area yet again. A lot of what Mike does is never seen, or if it is, you don't recognize the full effort behind it. A few years ago, when Judy Rankin started her JTR Suitcase Fund, a charity that helps kids in West Texas defray the cost of playing junior golf, Mike went to work. First, he gave away pro-am spots to the younger kids in Judy's program, an expensive gift to some kids who would never have otherwise gotten to have that opportunity to meet their heroes. Then, sponsors got involved. Today, some of Mike's best donors buy pro-am teams in the Volunteers of America LPGA event, not for customers or salespeople, but so that Judy's kids can continue to play. This year, uh, just in past years, juniors from the JTR Suitcase Fund traveled from regions of West Texas to Dallas to play in the Pro-Am alongside their heroes, our athletes. For, those of the, for most of them, it was a dream fulfilled. You hear stories and you think, wow, what an exceptional, sec, exceptional human being. But for Mike, it's a typical Thursday. His commitment to the LPGA has been extraordinary, and it's an example that we should all live of the importance of teamwork and partnership. So let's roll the video and see Mike in action. Volunteers of America does so much good for so many across the country. There's my king, the CEO, with the great Kathy Whitworth. The alignment with the LPGA is perfect for our own diversity, equity, and inclusion work at Volunteers of America. Lewis wins for the first time in Texas. We're really sort of dedicating our efforts with this tournament to our employees who are really the caregivers giving support to those most vulnerable across America. So I, I could be here all night re recounting Mike's acts of kindness and service and of always of thinking of others before himself, but I have just one more example. So unfortunately, Mike couldn't be here tonight. His tickets were booked, his bags were packed. It's cold in Dallas. He'd really like to be here with his amazing wife in this beautiful South Florida weather. But before he left, he didn't feel exactly right. So in typical Mike fashion, because he would never want to endanger others, he took precautions and he tested positive for COVID. Yeah, kind of a, a big bummer. Always thinking of others, that's Mike King, a partner, an advocate, a good and decent man, for those reasons and countless others, it's my honor and privilege to award this year's LPGA Commissioner's Award to Mr. Mike King. So you'll see Mike's doing fine. He couldn't be here in person, but he quickly jumped into action and he did a quick video for us. So let's hear from Mike. Thank you, Molly. So appreciate this award, and more importantly, I appreciate your calming, thoughtful leadership as commissioner of the LPGA. Uh, goodness knows the golf world needs that right now, uh, and we are blessed and fortunate to have you in this role. So thank you so much. I want to thank a couple of your teammates 
uh, uh, leading off with Scott Ensign. Uh, Scott, you have been the, our, our, our supportive ally every step of the way uh, with our Volunteers of America tournament, uh, and you've grown from being a trusted colleague to a, to a close friend. And so thank you so much for that, and I wish you nothing but the best in, in this new phase of your new journey, uh, and, and I owe you a lunch to come and congratulate you on that. Uh, also, I want to thank Ricky Latsky. Ricky, you are my favorite truth teller in the world. Uh, you are the rock of support for all tournament partners. I've shared that with you before in, in, in person. I want to share it for all to hear. Uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, you are absolutely key to all of us, uh, and we literally could not do this without you. So thank you so much for that. Also, I want to uh, uh, thank a very special person. We have been blessed. We have been blessed uh, in Texas uh, to have the most trusted voice in golf, uh, that of Judy Rankin as ambassador for our tournament. Uh, Judy, your, your impact on our tournament uh, is, is unmeasurable. Uh, literally, your personal involvement brought street cred to the tournament from day one, and it continues to this day and beyond. I can't thank you enough for that. We have loved working with you. We're going to continue working with you. Thank you so much for what you bring to us. You bring it just by walking in the room. So thank you so much for that. Also, of course, thank you to our wonderful players, our wonderful players who are, who are truly being honored tonight. Uh, not only are they the best golfers in the world, but frankly, they're some of the best human beings in the world. And that's even more powerful. That makes an even more powerful statement as really the representatives of our game and representatives of what we all are a part of here. And then, of course, everyone here tonight, everyone who's involved in some way with the LPGA, your collective efforts on behalf of women's equity in the world truly injects more positive energy and love back into the world. This literally makes the world a better place. That's the real impact that's had here. That's the true mission of the LPGA and Volunteers of America, and we are both aligned in that mission, literally making the world a better place. I truly believe that's the final result, and that's the collective result. I personally am I'm humbled and honored to be aligned with you, with all of you, on this important mission. So thank you very much. So M Mike makes us all better and makes us better people. Congrats again, uh, Mike King, on the Commissioner's Award in 2022. Thank you, Tom. I know that um, Mike must have been so disappointed um, not to be here tonight. Um, he's a great supporter of the LPGA Tour, and uh, I was so disappointed when I heard the news that he wasn't going to be here tonight, but uh, I'm so glad that he was able to put together that video um, and, to, uh, and to speak to us this evening. Next up tonight, we will honor the winner of the eighth annual Rolex Arnica Major Award, which this season was determined following the conclusion of the AIG Women's Open, the fifth and final major of the year. Joining me on stage to present this year's award is one of the most recognizable names in golf and the namesake of this honor. A 10-time major champion, an eight-time Rolex Player of the Year, and the 1994 Louise Suggs Rolex Rookie of the Year Award recipient, it is Annika Sorenstam. And as Annika makes her way to the stage, let's take a look back at how the five major championships unfolded this season. Mixed emotions here. Anytime you say goodbye to a place that has been this meaningful. Record-setting performance so far. That total 16 under through 54 hole. Jessica Cord is second. Watch out, watch out. And she moves to 11 under par. Three putt bogey for Cup Cho. Excellent shot from Cup Cho. That's exactly what she needed. One last time, the statue of Dana Short. There it is. And the final leap into Poppy's Pond will belong to Jennifer Cup Cho.
She's a known front runner and has been successful from this 54 hole position before. Uh, so I think all eyes on Minji Lee today. Time and again. She just ran away from everybody. Minji Lee wins the U.S. Women's Open. But well, Inji Chun already has two major championships. It's been quite the whirlwind of a morning here at Congressional. What we expect to see, though, the golf course is really firming up, and Lexi's taken advantage of that. How about that? Maybe this is going to be the day. That is a huge burn of luck for Inji Chun. Chun perseveres and wins the championship with a clutch par putt at the 72nd hole. On the tee from Canada, Brooke Anderson. Sophia Schubert to become the first player to 16 under. She's got it. She has got it. A couple of birdies and alongside Sophia Schubert. Clubhouse leader at 16 under for the win. There it is, and Brooke Henderson is a major champion again. Two players are uh, 10 under, and the team will see some more action. This time. Oh, that, that. A knowing look there from Minji Chan. The biggest day in her career, the AIG Women's Open Champion. It was an incredible year for major championships, but courtesy of her performance across all five majors, including a win at the U.S. Women's Open, the winner of the Rolex Annika Major Award for 2022 was, of course, Minji Lee. We're going to make sure they get put down safely, and then we're going to take a seat and have a little chat. Pick a seat, any seat. This one's mine, though. <laughs> yeah, grab the mic. Wow, what a, what a year it's been. And um, before we get to your season, I, I, I want to talk to you, Annika, about the performance of uh, Minji, uh, not only across the majors, but specifically at the U.S. Women's Open at Pine Needles. Yeah, well, first of all, Minji, congratulations. Um, obviously, I find this award very special, <laughs> uh, thanks to my partnership and the LPJ. But uh, as you know, majors really define the champions. So um, just you played amazing. And um, I played this year at, at Pine Needles, uh, not for very long, but I was there for a little bit. And you know, that place just has such a special place in my heart. But the way the course was setting up, I mean, it just took an amazing champion to play well there and just watching you just power off the tee, accuracy with your irons, just, and then a fabulous touch around the greens. And if you ever played there, those greens can be a little tricky. And uh, it was just beautiful to watch. And uh, yeah, it was uh, very ins inspiring. Thank you. 
Now, you got your first major championship victory at the Amundi Evian Championship, and then you win the US Women's Open the next year, which was earlier this season. What, how did your confidence change once you'd broken through and got that first major win? Because we were all wondering when it was going to come, as I'm sure you were too. Right. I mean, I wasn't kind of expecting it. So, you know, I played really, really well in the last round to get into that playoff at Evian. So, yeah, no, um, you never know when it's going to happen. So you always keep fighting and persevering. So. And how did that change your perspective coming into this season, especially when, it, when you look at the majors? Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely the experience from Evian um, that final day um, really set me up for the US Open. And, you know, just, um, you know, playing the US Open is not like any other experience. So, um, yeah, I think it uh, just gave me a lot of confidence and um, just the experience that I had back at Evian, I think, just helped me get over the line. When you look at Minji's performance in the other major championships, she had a runner-up finish and a tied for fourth finish as well. On top quality venues, you must be a little bit jealous about the, the quality of venues that they're playing nowadays, Annika. Well, I'm, I'm excited for them. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Are I you going to make a comeback and play a couple of <laughs> no. I always ask No, this you is that. about Minji, right? So, um, I mean, yeah, first of all, I mean, it's obviously great that these ladies are getting a chance to play what I bucket list courses, right? Um, yeah, I played in a generation where we only played a few of those. So it's, um, I mean, I think it's great for the LPGA and for women's golf to play at these fantastic courses. And you know, these courses, I mean, they're classics, right? There's a reason why they're classics and that, you know, it all demands accuracy off the tee, um, patience in majors and all the things we talk about. And I really, I think it really defines the true champion. And, and this year, the way Minji has played is just, you know, fabulous. It just shows the consistency and the mindset. It's a little different mindset in majors, I think, than other tournaments. And, you know, for uh, Minji to win the Rolex Sonica Major Award. And it's, I think it's, it's a big deal, obviously, because Rolex does such a good job with, you know, supporting women and, and just the high events. But uh, it says a lot about this caliber of a displayer right here. Yeah, you were second at Congressional, fourth at Muirfield as well. Um, it, it speaks volumes, I think, with the way that you were able to handle those golf courses and different venues. How were you able to sort of change your game um, for the differing venues that the major championships were played on? Uh, well, I think my ball striking has been really good, um, I don't know, for the whole year. So I think it ha really helped me, you know, obviously Congressional is a very ball striker's golf course and Muirfield, it's always nice to, you know, be able to hit the ball well and, you know, where you want it, where you want it I guess. So, um, yeah, no, I think um, ball striking really helped me um, you know, have really low, I mean, have good scores at those two venues and obviously US Open and every, all the major courses that we go to are such high caliber. So, yeah, I mean, they've been great venues. They were good for you this year as well. <laughs> yeah. Now, while we've got you here, we might as well talk about the Rolex Player of the Year, right? I mean, whilst you're here. Okay. <laughs> so, um, let's take a look back at your 2022 season as a whole. Nobody is playing better than Minji Lee. Oh, almost perfect. This is some golf. We all know how good you are. Word on the street is that you could be even better. How good do you feel you could be? I mean, I guess the sky's the limit. For the lead? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Minji Lee wins the U.S. Women's Open at Pine Needles. Minji Lee wins the Cognizant Founders Cup and joins the list of major champions with this title on her resume. I'm just beginning to scratch the surface of sort of my potential, so um, I, I don't know what my potential is, but hopefully I get to unlock it. You, you don't like watching that, do you? I mean, you played amazing golf, and you're thinking, oh, I don't want to see that. What? I mean, what? <laughs> it, it's... You're only just behind Lydia Ko when you look at the uh, Rolex player. I know she set a pretty good target uh, on the first round today here. But you've, yeah. you've won two si seven-figure checks already this year. So, you know, another one. <laughs> Why not? Why not make it three? Um, talk about your, your season uh, as a whole and, and what winning the Rolex player of the year would mean to you. I think as a whole, it's been my best year yet. You know, I've been really solid for most of the year and 
you know, the past couple of weeks I probably haven't, as, uh, haven't played as well as I wanted, but, you know, looking back and reflecting on, you know, the US Open, the Founders' Cup, I, and for the first half of the year I was hitting it as well as I have ever been, so, yeah, no, I, I think it's just, you know, there's a lot of pressure, you know, you, once, you, once you're up there, it's sort of, um, it's hard to, I think, refresh and, um, you know, set new goals. So, uh, yeah, for me, it's been a little difficult the last couple of weeks, but I think this is the last event, and obviously I'm one point behind Lydia, um, the Rolex Player of the Year award. So, yeah, hopefully I can put up three good scores and um, have a chance. Well, we wish you all the best. Anik, you won eight of these Rolex Player of the Year. Um, they, they talk about what this means to the players, because we don't get a chance to, to know that. We just watch from afar. What does it mean to you as a player to have been the best player on that tour eight times? Well, I think it's been said all night. I mean, this is, uh, you know, the, the field every week is fantastic on the LPGA, and the players and the calibers are just getting better and better. But I think... You know, personally, and I'm sure other players feel the same way, you start the year off and you go, okay, what do I want to achieve this year? And, and that's one of the things that at least pop out of my mind is I want to be the best player on the LPGA. And, and you know, through the, through the season, you have a chance to, you know, collect all these points. And, it, and I think consistency, consistency pays off. And, and um, yeah, of course, I mean, it's, you're proud when the season is over, and, but you know, the next season starts and it's like, well, that was great, can I do it again, right? I mean, you keep setting the goals, you keep moving you know, higher and higher, and um, I think it's I've certainly one of the best achievements you can achieve, and I was lucky to do it a few times, and um, you look back at it, and it just obviously warms my heart. Well, thank you to the both of you for being here tonight, Annika for presenting this award, and Minji for being with us, and uh, congratulations on the Rolex Annika Major Award. The best of luck to you over the next three days. Thank you so much to Annika and Minji. You. The final award that uh, we'll be handing out tonight uh, honors the best of the year's rookie class. And to introduce this year's winner, I'd like to bring up a player who is very familiar with success in a rookie season, the LPGA and World Golf Halls of Fame member, and the 1979 Louise Suggs Rolex Rookie of the Year, Nancy Lopez. Thank you all. What a great night, and it's an honor for me to be here. Uh, before I start, I want to thank Rolex for all that they have done for all these years that I can remember from way back when I won Rolex Play, uh, Rookie of the Year and Rolex Player of the Year. But thank you all so much for all that you have done for women's golf. We appreciate you so much. It is also a privilege to introduce the winner of an award that has meant so much to me and many others over the years. The Louise Suggs Rolex Rookie of the Year Award is 60 years old this year. The first winner was Mary Mills back in 1962. Since then, we have had 11 players win this award who went on to be inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame. And when you look down the list of recent winners, you know that number is going to grow. I was so fortunate to be able to capture the Rolex Rookie of the Year title back in 1978. At the time, I felt great to join pl players like Susie Maxwell, Sandra Post, Joanne Carner, Amy Alcott, Sally Little, and others who had been Rookies of the Year. In my first year on tour, I went head-to-head -head with these players, and as time has gone by, I'm, thr I'm thrilled to share this award with them. But there's one difference in those players and the one I'm here to introduce tonight. We weren't 19 at that time. And none of us had already won the Player of the Year Award on, on the Ladies European Tour as an 18-year-old before joining the LPGA. Those are just a few accomplishments of the young woman we are here to recognize tonight. Atia Titikun 
I told her I need to pronounce that right. <laughs> Who is known by her friends, by fellow players, by her nickname, Gino. I hope I can call you Gino too. Join the LPG tour with more records than many players amass in their careers. She holds the record as the youngest in history to win a professional event at age 14. Wow, 14. She won twice on the LET before turning pro as an 18-year-old. Then she won twice more on the LET and not only earned her, their order of merit, she was both Rookie of the Year and Player of the Year in Europe. When she joined the LPG Tour earlier this year, Gino had an immediate impact. She won in only her fifth start at the JTBC Classic presented by Barbasol. She won again later in the year at the Walmart Northwest Arkansas Championship presented by P&G. But she also shown an amazing level of consistency with 15 top 10 finishes. Coming here to Naples, she has not finished outside the top 10 in two months. But as impressive as all this is, you can spend five minutes with Chino. You will be blown away by her personality. She is the definition of a happy champion, quick with a, sm a smile and always available to fans, her fellow players, and the media. She has more charisma than should be allowed in someone so young. But we're happy she has it. And we're happy she's here. So let's take a look at Ataya's remarkable rookie year on the LPGA Tour. It's only 19 now, but this is a superstar in the making. So it won't be very long before we see this young lady in the winner's circle. Just absolutely brilliant. It's going to give us what would appear to be our playoff here at Aviara. <laughs> Nearly done to approach. Ataya Titakun is an LPGA winner in her fifth start of a rookie season. Ataya Titakun and Daniel Kang keep playing. The Phenom has done it again. Ataya Titikun wins for the second time in a rookie season. And now it is my honor to present the 2022 Luis Suggs Rolex Rookie of the Year Award to Ataya Titikun. Wow, this is nervous. <laughs> uh, good evening, everyone. Is it a huge honor to receive the Louis Suggs Lolex Rookie of the Year? I am just a little girl who always have a dream to play and compete on LPGA Tour. But be able to on the stage here in front of you guys is more than a dream come true. First of all, I would like to thank you, LPJ, LPJ founder, all the sponsor, all the partner, and everyone who involved to getting their um, elevatings and getting the women golf bigger and better. 
Thank you to Lolex for being our partner and for a wonderful night. And I also thankful to my managers and my caddies who are always being here with me all the whole years um, with one suitcase, <laughs> no halls here in the States. Um, and thank you for really taking me a really good care this year. Also back to Thailand, thank you to my coach, Chris, um, for always picking my calls on the midnight in Thailand, <laughs> freaking out my, <laughs> my games and helping me get the best in me. Also my family back home, thank you for your love and support. Thank you for letting me chase my dreams and thank you for away by my sides. Thank you to my friends, my sponsor back home to Thailand for always support and being my side um, and your continuous support, it's really mean to me. Without you guys, without anyone, I couldn't be here. You guys know who you are. Thank you all for the support and the love that you have been. Thank you guys again. Should I go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thought Nancy had grabbed my script there just to try and mess with me, but she didn't. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, our evening is about to uh, come to a close, but there are obviously two awards that are still up for grabs that haven't been awarded here on the stage and uh, they will come to a conclusion at the end of this week here at the CME Group Tour Championship. They are the biggest awards of the LPGA season, the Vare Trophy which goes to the scoring average winner and the Rolex Player of the Year. The Vare Trophy continues its tradition of coming down to the wire. The race for the Vare Trophy which is awarded to the player with that lowest scoring average for the whole season is still mathematically too close to call, although it is looking very likely that uh, Lydia Ko will go back to back um, and become the first back to back winner of the award since 2013 2014. Lydia has a scoring average of 69.049, um, and she took home the Vare Trophy last season for the first time in her career. It would take uh, a tired Titicoon beating Lydia by 35 shots uh, this week. Now, a tire is pretty good, um, but I'm not so sure that she's going to be able to do that, especially with Lydia shooting 65 today. But you never know uh, what can happen in the game, uh, so we can't award the Vare Trophy. Uh, until it is over at the end of the week. Now, the race for the Rolex Player of the Year Award, as you've seen from our interviews today, is uh, a lot closer. And uh, that may well come down to the end uh, of play here. And one player that uh, we didn't get a chance to interview, uh, but we felt that uh, the fact that she spoke so well here at the podium uh, was, a, was a fitting way to honor her was a Thai Titicun who could potentially win the Rolex Player of the Year award uh, at the end of this week. So I think give a, give up, uh, give a big round of applause for a Thai Titicun and the way she has played this year and to all of uh, our contenders for the Rolex Player of the Year. There's going to be a lot of intrigue here as, uh, as we come down to the wire and we look at those standings and we keep an eye on those standings uh, during our broadcasts around the world and especially here in the US on Golf Channel and NBC. I would like to thank everyone for being here tonight. It really is a very, very special evening bringing together the real ecosystem. I think that's a word that's been used at the Evian Championship, the Mundi Evian Championship before, the real ecosystem of the LPGA Tour coming together to honor such greatness on this stage. So uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching uh, around the world and honoring these uh, great athletes and these great players. But to wrap up 
our Rolex LPGA Awards. I'd like to throw it over to Hope. Thanks so much, Tom. We watch these women compete for 30 plus weeks a year, but this week is something special. And more specifically, tonight is so important that we give them one more moment to shine before we wrap up the 2022 season. I know it's kind of hard to forget that there's actually a tournament going on this week, but it is the LPGA season ending finale, the CME Group Tour Championship. So don't forget to watch on Golf Channel, Peacock, and NBC on Sunday. Thanks so much everyone for watching. Good night.